Wait, Mary. Never mind. Yes? Just a second. Uh, Mary. Uh, will you leave me for a moment, please? You shouldn't have called. I begged you not to. No. Oh, why make me repeat it? I don't want to see you again, Arnold. Never. I love my husband and I refuse to hurt him. Yes, I know you need the money. I'm honestly trying to get it for you. Well, uh, won't it be all right if I send it by messenger? Oh, you wouldn't do that, Arnold. All right. I'll ask him again. No, not because I'm afraid of anything. Just for his peace of mind. Tonight. Well, I can't. I can't see you. No, I'm going to the opera with a friend. Well, that, that's impossible. Oh, Arnold, I can't talk to you now. Please. All right, I... Yes, maybe, oh, nine o'clock, ten, I don't know. Yes, I promise, I promise. She'll come all right. Vera. May I come in? Why, of course, Vera. Oh, how lovely you look. Thank you. Sit down. What, in the chair of the famous judge? And why not? You don't come here often enough. Oh, you're going out? Yes, it's my opera night. That's right. I, I'd forgotten that. I'm sorry. Well, no wonder. With all you have to do. Well, what is it tonight? Carmen. Oh, very charming score. You old fraud. You know you simply detest opera. Well, never mind. Carl Wilde is taking me. He ought to be here any minute now. Well, you just warn the young man that this is the last time he's going to have the privilege. From next week on... Be honest. You know you'd much rather stay here and work over that old brief you brought home. Honestly, Vera, if it wasn't for this important case coming up in court tomorrow... Well, I'll just have to make the best of it then, without you. Never mind. I'm getting a nice, long vacation pretty soon. Oh, I do hope so, dear. Until then, you'll forgive me? Of course. <laughs> But it's so much more fun going places with you. 
I like the feeling of belonging to you. Wasting my time in a courtroom when I could be with you. Oh, darling, I know I'm the biggest fool in all Vienna. Mm. Someday. Hmm. Oh, well. Um, by the way, Richard, did you forget? That money I asked you for, you know? No, I didn't forget. I have it. Oh. And when I do get my vacation, Paris, the Riviera, we'll do a lot of roaming around. You and I. Oh, wonderful. But really, I'm content to remain at home now. I've had enough of... Going away? You mean... Your trip to Italy? I'm back. And I want to stay. Let's not talk about that. But your being away made me realize how much I missed you. Loved you. I do. Oh, I am certain now, Richard. I want to forget that trip. Everything about it. Forgotten. Oh, darling. We'll never again get in such a muddle of misunderstanding. Never, Richard. Pardon, madam, but Mr. Weil is waiting. Oh, tell him I'll be right down. And, uh, and now, Richard, if, if, if you let me have the money, I, I'll be right off. You want it tonight? Well, you said you had it ready. Well, I did get it, yes, but I didn't bring it home. I didn't know it was so urgent. Oh, well, I didn't expect I'd need it. You can't possibly use it tonight, anyway. If, if, if I could have some of it tonight. Well, I'll give you a check. No, 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 it's, a, a check won't do. Won't do? Well, what in the world are you... Now, darling, please. Please, trust me. It isn't a question of trust. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, I'm all right. You know what you're doing. I know. I'm awfully sorry to disappoint you, dear. It's all right. Tomorrow will do. It, it will have to do. Uh, and now I, I mustn't keep Carl waiting any longer. Vera. Hurry back. You know, Carmen will bore Carl to death. Why can't I send him back here to help you with your brief? Oh, no. And have you sit in the box all alone? Well, what of it? Nobody will steal me. Oh, no. Carl has enough to do all day. Very well, then. But don't you work too hard. Goodbye. Bye. I'll be waiting. Bye bye. Bye. Vera, really, you haven't said two words since we left your house. Oh, I am so sorry, Carl. Are you troubled about something? No. No, of course not. Because I couldn't bear to see you. You know how I adore you, Vera. Well, I am worried. It's about Richard. He works too hard. Carl, will you do me a very great favor? Certainly. Anything in the world. Well, Richard, I have so much to do tonight. I want to... What do you think of leaving me at the opera and going back to help him with his brief? You're always thinking of Judge Kessler. Now, just for an hour or two. I know you're not very eager about Carmen. But I am eager about being with you here. However, am I to call for you later? At 11, shall we say? Very well. Oh, you're a dear, Carl. It will mean so much to him.
The men in the lobby could hardly keep their eyes off you. Oh, now, Carl. Haven't we known each other too long for such a manufactured compliment? Vera, <laughs> now start talking and run along. You treat me like a schoolboy, and I love it. <laughs> Eleven. Nothing could keep me away. Oh, you're a dear car. Who is it, my dear? Why, that's Vera Kessler. Oh, isn't she lovely? Charming. Oh, I wish I could catch her eye. Shall I go and tell her you're here, Mrs. Ritter? Oh, no, no, it isn't necessary. Why, there's the conductor now. I'll see her after the act. celebrating your new apartment. Well, instead of drinking, Joyce, try to put it in order. You treat me like a dog. Well, that's better than you deserve. I'm as good as you are. We're not in the army anymore. One of these fine days, I'm going to kick you right outside in the street where you belong. Oh, no, you won't. I'm too valuable. I know too much. And if you don't start treating me with more respect, what will you do? I... Sorry. <laughs> oh, but I hate you. You have everything. You're handsome. Your women, they love you. They send you money. No woman gives a hang about me. It's always you, you with your lies, your... <laughs> Put that gun down! <laughs> It now you can clear out. Oh, please don't send me away. I wasn't going to shoot. Get out. But I've no place to go. I'll behave, I promise. You know I get excited. I can't help it. My shell shock. You know, I've put up with you long enough. Didn't I serve you well in the army? I was the best orderly you ever had. And don't think I'm not grateful. For you picked me up when I was like a homeless dog. What do you want me to do? I'll do anything. Keep your place. And your crazy head if you can. <laughs> we'll have plenty of money before long. Yeah. And then... Did a package come for me? Yes, sir. Right here. For Mrs. Brown. The old fool, she promised this two days ago. Now she's only sent... 10,000, in spite of all her gurgling of love. <laughs> the old cheat. Will he more? How much is Holson asking for? I'll need twice this amount to keep me out of jail. Well, how about the little dear that's coming up tonight? Isn't she rich? Mind your own business. I'll manage. Just see who that is, will you? Dr. Ziegler, our cherished landlord. Ah. Well, Doctor, I'm afraid things are in pretty much of a mess. Oh, you would be cozy soon enough. What a charming little loveliness and all the privacy you want. <laughs> Even I am leaving tonight for the country, spending a few days with my family. Very you nice. don't have to bother about such things, Mr. Hartman. Lucky back to lot. <laughs> well, Dr. Ziegler, hmm? let you and I vanish. Someone is expected. Mm, so soon? <laughs> hey, Charmer? Of course, I understand. I understand. You don't mind, do you? Mind? 
I was your butler. And somewhat of a ladies' man, too. You Romanians are regular <laughs> devils. <laughs> Come, doctor. Oh, kind of vague. I'm forgetting what I came for. Just a little matter of rent. Oh, yes, yes, the rent. Uh, I'll mail you the money in the morning. Well, that would be all right, I suppose. If you come along, Doctor, I'll buy you a beer before train time. Excellent. And now I take goodbye to my fortunate young friend. How I envy you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, don't forget the money. Oh, no, 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 I won't forget that. Hello? Hello? Oh, yes, yes, Holter, yeah. Yes, well, man alive, stop hounding me. No, 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 you shall have your money by noon tomorrow. Yes, all of it. Yes, I've got 10,000 in bonds right now. Yeah, I'm expecting the rest to see me. Say, listen, I can't talk to you anymore. The doorbell's ringing. No, no, you can depend on me this time, Holter. Lovely of you to have come. Won't you sit down? No, uh, I've only a moment. Well, let me take off your cloak. At least let me kiss your hand. Oh, no, please. Well, I must say, this is hardly the way that I pictured your first visit. I must get back to the opera house before my absence has been noticed. I only came to tell you that... Arnold, you'll be disappointed. Disappointed? When you're here at last? I couldn't bring the money. Oh, impossible, you... You can't have forgotten, you promised. Well, my husband didn't have it. Tomorrow he... Tomorrow's too late. I depended on you. Well, I tried. But you must have known how much I needed it. I promise you, I will send it by messenger before noon. Promise? Well, do you... Do you want to give me my letters now, or... Or must I pay cash on delivery? <laughs> You needn't quite make me out of blackmail. Oh, I don't blame you for thinking me a fool after the way I behaved in Italy. But I'm not altogether an idiot. You are so alone. You hinted at a threat. There was really no mistaking what you meant. You permit me to show you how wrong you are. Allow me. Have you changed your mind about me now? I need hardly say that these letters are worth a great deal to your husband, at any rate. You're low, on. It's written all over your face. In Pizarro, you didn't think so. How I ever could have become infatuated with you. And the fact remains, dear lady, you did. Very much. Pizarro, I was a fool. I was mad. Oh, you're not the first neglected wife to lose her head. But I didn't. Thank heaven I came to my senses before anything happened between us. I can always be grateful for that, at least. Do you think that the dear judge would believe it was all quite so innocent? He'd understand. Then why don't you tell him? Because I can't hurt him. That's why I'll buy back those miserable letters. Not because I'm afraid. You know, your new role of the faithful, loving wife, I must say, is rather amusing. Are you giving me my letters? You see? <laughs> Arnold, you must let me out of here at once. I've given you the letters. Now I want you. Keep away from me. You played with me too long. Stop. <laughs> what a pretty picture. Caesar's wife protecting her virtue at the point of a gun. <laughs> you weren't shoot. <laughs> no. I won't shoot. I'll drop it. 
outside. You know, it's a funny thing, but that's the second time tonight that I've had that gun pointed at me. But you won't shoot. <laughs> Julia, I don't think that we'd better wait any longer for Vera. I don't see how Vera can stand Carmen. She's hurt it so often. Well, now, you must say. I I'm sure she'll be delighted to find you here. Michael, if you must yawn, don't swallow them in that annoying manner. They're good for my digestion. Had a hard day at the office. Office? It's nothing but matrimony. You've been sleepy ever since you married me. No, it started with our engagement. Oh. Well, pleasant dreams. You know, Richard, I'm dying, Mrs. Gerard. I haven't had a chance for a good talk with her since she's back from Italy. How is she? Marvelous. She's a different person nowadays. I knew a change would be good for both of you. You know, married people ought to be separated once in a while to appreciate each other. Right. Well, we're the happiest couple in the world now. I can't tell you how glad I am, Richard. You were neglecting Gerard frightfully and it hurt her. You know, a woman like Gerard might seem strong and proud, but... Even the strongest woman needs her man to be just a little stronger. My dear, that lecture of yours needs colored slides. <laughs> uh, yeah. How much more is there? It'll be over any minute. I'm just going to get his Kessler's box. The box is open. Yes, we used to be friends. I haven't seen him for ages. He turned out to be pretty much of a rotter. Where, where did this happen? In his apartment. I just left Richard, looked in my office, and the police phoned me that they'd found my name among his papers. Oh. You, you went up there then? No, but I've got to run up there now. It's a nasty mess. They, uh, they don't know who was... Who did it? No, but they've got a pretty good idea. Oh, it's nothing for you to bother your pretty head about. Let's go. Thank you. 
Dear, I'll call her in the morning. Well, I'm sure she'll be here any minute now. Uh, no, but I really am very stupid. Uh, good night. Give her my regards. Good night. Until good evening. Night. The slave of the opera, at last. Darling. Now, is he worth waiting for? We only stayed to say that we couldn't stay. Well, I'm delighted to have you stay. Thanks. Have a nice time, dear? Oh, yes. Didn't you bring Carl Wilde home with you? I was dying to check with him. Oh, he's coming in later. Didn't he call for you after the show? Of course he did. Why shouldn't he have called? Well, then, what did you do with him? Is he being held for a ransom? No, he's, he's coming in later. He was called away. Called away? Yes, it, uh, it seems there's been a murder. Murder? Who? A man named Hartstein, something like that. I don't... Hartstein? Oh, I remember now. It was Hartman. Not Arnold Hartman. Did you know him? Oh, yes, slightly. He used to practice law. He gave it up for some shady business. I do wish while we hurry back to the lurid details. Girl, yeah, how could you resist going with him? Why should I go with him? Weren't you curious to see the place? No. I should have been. I think it's thrilling. Well, if you're all so interested, I... I brought a paper with me. Where is it? It's in the car. I'll send for it. Oh, Marie, I left the newspaper in the car. Will you get it for me, please? Yes, madame. Oh, and Marie. I must have left my other glove in the car. Will you look for it, please? Oh, dear. Why haven't you a fire? It's really quite warm, dear. I feel cold. Yeah, I'll it for you. Never mind. I... What's the matter, dear? You're tired. I'm tired, Richard. It must have been a draft. I'm really not at all cold now. Madame? Oh, yes. Here's your paper. This will be interesting. Madame, but there's another car. Why, it must be in the car. I know. And well, look again. Everywhere. Look, Vera, here's Hoffman's picture. Oh, the poor devil. It's a fascinating face. What magnetic eyes. Vera, did you see it? Yes. Yes, I, I saw it. Listen. The cold, lifeless body of Arnold Hoffman, noted sportsman and former attorney, was found by the police early tonight. <laughs> it must be cold. Now we'll get the news firsthand. Get up here, Carl. I say, this is exciting. It took a murder to wake you up. Hello, Carl. You just told us the news. Any developments? Did you just come from there? Yes. It's a ghastly business. Who killed him? They don't know yet. They don't know? Not definitely. He was killed by a woman. I'm sure it was a woman. And what is your theory, Carl? Do you also think it was a woman? No. Hartman was killed by someone who came to rob him. Rob? Yes. Curious. He had 10,000 in bonds. They were gone after the murder. And I thought it was a hot love affair. A crime of passion. You know, Richard, the police... Do they uh, suspect anyone? Yes, a half-crazy individual named Grimm. Do they think she... They found him there with a the body. Did he tell them about the bonds? Yes, he said the bonds were given Hartman only today by a middle-aged lady. Apparently, she was in the habit of supplying him with funds. Oh, a relative. Well, hardly. So he was a gigolo. I knew it. Whatever he was, he was a rocker. Well, he's made love to one woman too many. I tell you, the sight of that fellow Grimm crawling around on his knees, moaning, swearing he didn't do it. Perhaps he is innocent. Bless her heart. Bless the earth. Always for the underdog. Oh, he's probably guilty right enough. He acted like a man. Conscience. Don't they all act that way after a murder? I'll wait till the Viennese police have the criminal behind bars within 24 hours. Why, why are you so certain, Richard? Oh, I've followed hundreds of these cases, and no matter how clever the murderer is, he always leaves a clue. What if he's not quite certain that there were no clues? There's no such thing as absolute certainty. I'll bet I could do it without leaving a clue. Great. It's a perfect crime. <laughs> you, 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 you
fine, darling. Oh, no, really, thank you, Vera. Uh, oh, by the way. Is uh, this your glove? Mine? Why? Why, why should it be mine? I mean, uh, one glove looks very much like any other. I found it in front of the house. Uh, what house? Oh, here, on the doorstep. Oh, here? Here, yes. Yes, I guess it is mine. Yes, of course it is. Thank you very much. Uh, isn't it awfully hot in here? Aren't you well? I uh, feel just a little dizzy. Well, I'll take you to your rooms. No, please, please don't come. I'll, I'll be quite all right, really. I, I uh, you'll forgive me, won't you? I, I, I don't feel very well. I hope you're all dizzy. All this talk about murder is upset her. I don't blame her, poor dear. I'm feeling a bit out myself. Let me take you home, my dear. Oh, Richard, you go to her. You can see her. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I only want to say good night. Not now. I know I'm being very silly, but I'll see you later. Vera, what is the matter with you? Nothing. But you act so strangely. Strangely? Why, why not at all? I, I'm very, very tired and, and, and I'm nervous. That's what it is. Yes, but... Very well, then. I'll leave you. Good night, dear. Richard! Yes, dear? I was mistaken. We can't begin over again. It wouldn't be fair to you. Fair? I can't make you happy. Not now. Not any longer. Bill, you don't know what you're saying. I... I must go my own way now. Alone. We went all over that before. I thought we decided... Everything has changed. It's different now. I have to leave you. Leave me? I have to. Oh, don't you see, Richard? I have to leave you. Very well, then. Leave. Whenever you like. Tonight... Oh, I must, Richard, I must. The sooner the better. Before you drive me insane with your moods and caprices. First you want to stay. Then you don't want to stay. Well, you have the mind of a child. You're right. It's hopeless. Richard, don't, don't leave me. I'm afraid to stay alone. Yeah. 
Kessler to see you, sir. Mrs. Kessler? Show her in. For heaven's sake, Sierra, where on earth have you been? Don't ask me now, Carl. I have something very important to talk to you about. But, Sierra, you've got to tell me. Where were you? Richard's been looking all over town for you. Richard? There's only one thing I came for. I need you, Carl. I want your help. Help? Why, Vera, what is it? Won't you sit down? Promise me that you'll do it. It's terribly, terribly important. I came to see you about the Hartman case. The Hartman case? What about it? Grimm, the man who did the... who, uh, who was found in the apartment. I've been thinking about him. That's why I'm here. But I still don't understand. No, that. but wait. Carl, I want you to defend him. But, Vera, I mean... I asked you to defend him. Isn't that enough? But there's no doubt that the man's the murderer. I mean, what can I do for Everything, him? everything. He's innocent. I mean, I mean, that's possible, isn't it? They don't always get the right person, do they? I, I've been reading about him in the papers, and I saw his picture. Carl, there's something in that man's eyes. He must be innocent. You have a hard time persuading a jury of that. He hasn't a friend. No one. Now, somebody has to help him. Vera, you amaze me. What an extraordinary woman you are. Oh. I can't help looking at you and wondering. At me? Why, what is it about me? The way you get all worked up over this man. The way that you know that he's innocent. Because he's so miserable. Because he's suffering. But still all this interest. You certainly have changed a lot lately. You've become kinder, more human somehow. I'm trying to be human. Well, Carl, you will do it, won't you? And you'll let me help too, huh? Let, let me send him some money. Now, I'm sure he must need money. How real you are, Vera. I won't refuse you. I'll do it. Oh, Carl, thank you. Oh, thank you. I knew you would. And you killed him. You killed Arnold Hartman with this gun. You murdered the man you say you loved. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I, I couldn't have killed him. My friend. He was my friend. Your friend. But you were jealous of him. He had money. He had women. And you envied him. I find that during the police examination, you testified that you hated Hartman. Is that correct? Yes. I hated him. Or oh, sometimes I could have... Grimm, you further testified that Hartman mistreated you. That he beat and abused you. He treated me like a dog. He was going to kick me out. Attorney for the state, have you any further questions to put to the accused? Yes, I have. It's true, isn't it, that on the night of the murder he again treated you abominably, threatened to beat you, and you, wild with rage, picked up that gun? Yes. And pointed it at him? I... Yes. You pointed. You aimed. There he was before you. In your power, the man you hated. And you went blind with rage. And shot him. Dead. Oh, no. No. I didn't. I didn't. You know I didn't. I didn't kill. Then you admit having had the gun. Having pointed it. Yes or no? Yes. Is it possible you pulled the trigger? The gun went off? No, no. No, please, just leave me alone. I see him every night, and he looks at me. Like you're looking now. Anything. I'll promise anything. Only please don't look at me. Not like that. Not like that. Not like that. <laughs> Sit down, please. 
Silence in the courtroom. Attorney for the defense may proceed. May it please the court, I desire to call an additional witness, Dr. Edmund Siegler. Your nationality? Romania. Are you related to the accused? No. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. According to your testimony before the police, you as owner of the house called that night about the rent. Did you stay there? Just for a moment. Hartman asked me to leave because he was expecting a visitor, a lady. A lady, a woman visitor. Gentlemen of the jury, please note that fact carefully. And uh, when did you leave? Immediately. I left the great. When did you part from him? He took me to my train and we parted at 12 minutes after 10. And you're positive Hartman was expecting a woman caller? Oh, yes. I saw her enter the house. Glenn and I saw her stealing into the house. We were at the end of the street, but we both saw her plainly. Yes, a woman. Now I remember. I saw her too. I saw her. But uh, what made you think she was calling on Hartman? Well, Hartman was the only tenant in the house. Can you describe her? Oh, yes. She wore a brocade coat with white fur. I saw that plainly, a long, brocade coat. Did you see her face? No. No. It was too dark to see her face. Thanks. Gentlemen of the jury, you have heard the witnesses. The policeman who found this wretched creature next to the cold body of the murdered man. You have heard testimony by experts regarding that man's fingerprints on the revolver. And you have heard him virtually admit his guilt here in the courtroom. Look at him. The man who admitted having killed his benefactor, his friend. In the name of the Republic of Austria, I accuse Ludwig Grimm of the murder of Arnold Hartmann. Gentlemen of the jury, the facts are before you. The state rests, awaiting your just verdict. Attorney for the defense may present the case of the accused. Gentlemen, we have just been listening to a lot of talk about fingerprints on that revolver. Now, gentlemen, let us consider. Grimm lived with the murdered man, practically his servant. It is so unlikely that he may have had occasion during his ordinary household duties to touch, to handle that gun and leave his fingerprints on it. But, gentlemen, the woman in the case, the woman seen entering the house a few minutes before the murder, What about her? 
Is she just likely to be thrust aside, forgotten by us? In whose hands rests the fate of a man? Perhaps an innocent man. Gentlemen of the jury, in your just deliberation, remember that woman. Remember her. Ludwig Grimm, have you anything more to say? Uh, I'm innocent. Innocent, I tell you. It was that woman. She did it. I'm innocent. She did it. She did it. Gentlemen of the jury, your task in this case is a very simple one. Two theories have been presented to you. Two sets of facts. It is for you to choose between them. The state contends and has brought evidence to prove that the accused Ludwig Grimm had both the motive and the opportunity to commit this crime. The state further proved that the accused was in the deceased apartment at about the time the crime was committed, and that his fingerprints were found on the gun with which the deed was done. If this evidence convinces you beyond a reasonable doubt, then you will find Ludwig Grimm guilty of murder. On the other hand, the defense contends that the accused was at a railroad station far from the scene of the crime at the time it was committed. The defense has further brought evidence to prove that an unknown woman was seen entering the deceased's apartment just as the accused was leaving. This is very serious and positive evidence, and you must not lightly ignore it. Remember, it is not for you to decide who killed Hartman. You need only concern yourself with the question of whether or not Grimm killed him. If you decide to acquit the accused of this charge, then it will be the duty of the police authorities to investigate this case further and discover if they can who this woman was and what part, if any, she played in the murder of Hartman. Is there anything I can do? Thanks, Carpet. If you don't mind, perhaps you'd better leave us. Please. Vera. Vera, dear. Why did you come here? What were you doing in court? I've got to go. But what brought you here? I, I want to go. Well, you can't go in this condition. No, I, I'm perfectly all right now. I, 
really, there's really nothing the matter with me. Vera. Why did you come here? You owe me an explanation. I... I came here to, uh... I, I came here to, to see you about, about a divorce. Divorce? Yes, you, uh... You, you understand these things and, um... Uh, and you'll know just, just what to do about it. If you really want a divorce, I'll not stand in your way. Then, uh... Then I'll... Uh, I'll go now. And and the divorce, you'll uh, you'll attend to everything. this at all. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Perfectly sure. Well, I never saw any good come of messing in other people's affairs. The rubbish. Well, I think you're making a big mistake. You're not here to think. Just the same, I don't like it. Well, who then? 
couple of emperors and a few assaulted kings. <laughs> oh, it's bright here. I knew you'd like it here. Life and color, that's what you need. It's very gay. I adore this cafe. You meet lots of your friends here. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Oh, 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 for a big, bright, and happy new year. I knew you'd say that ahead of time. Couldn't you wait a couple of hours more? Give you the surprise. Number one. <laughs> Believe me, Vera, it is good to see you again. Like old times, isn't it? Just. I've tried so hard to find you. <laughs> For you. For me, Carl. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Now I am jealous. Some other time for you, my dear, I was afraid of that demon husband of yours. And well, you may be. I eat him alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am going to have a good time tonight. <laughs> that makes it unanimous. We're all going to have a good time, no matter how hard a time we have doing it. <laughs> I will be quiet. I want to listen to the music. <laughs> writer wasn't such a fool. I myself have come around to the belief that it was a woman. Remember, Vera, that's been my theory from the first. Oh, yes. Yes, you always were a great little detective, my darling. And they'll get that woman yet. I hope so. Why should she get away with murder? <laughs> Just think, that woman may be anywhere. Anywhere at all. Why, she may even be here. That's hardly likely, you'll admit. Well, why not? If, as you say, she's a woman prominent in society, but what could be more natural than that she should be here tonight? Oh, what a morbid imagination. I can almost see her. People come up to her, they greet her. Why, at this very moment, she may be discussing the murder. Not with me, I wouldn't listen. Oh, come, come, come. Let's have a drink. It's New Year's Eve. Yes, and who cares? Give us a toast, Michael. A toast? A toast? Let's drink to... to Carl. To bigger and better lawsuits. Here's the light.
Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Michael. I want to hear some more gypsy music. Uh, no, no, I'll get behind with my drink. I insist. You're not going to treat me like a wife. Oh, all right. She always wants to parade me around. Come on. <laughs> Would you like to go to here? Come on. No, Carl, give me some more wine. Let's drink. Let's be gay. I want to have lots of fun. I want to laugh. It's so long since I've laughed. May the new year bring you lots of laughter then. Oh, I do hope so, Carl. The past year has been so sad. How much longer has it to live? Oh, about 20 minutes. I'll be glad to see it die. As glad as all for a person I hate it. I'll laugh when it dies. Why, Vera! Vera Kessler! My dear. How are you? I haven't seen you for ages. Hi, Mrs. Ritter. And Mr. Wilde. How do you do? No, not since that night at the opera Carmen, you know. Oh, you were there? Why, yes, we were in a box. Well, my dear friend, did you go during the second act? I looked everywhere for you and couldn't find you. You weren't in your seat. Why, I, uh, I, I went to sit with some friends. Oh, but there, I knew you. Oh, my darling father, forgive me, won't you? I simply got around to have a dance. See you later, darling. Bye-bye. I've got to go, Carl. I've got to go. You've got to go? Just take me away quickly. I'm a... But, Fiona, you're acting so strangely. What do you mean by strange? Crazy. Crazy. That's what you mean. No, dear. I mean nothing. Oh, I understand. Well, you're very well. Strange. Crazy. Insane. Oh, Fiona, please calm yourself. You can't go now. Well, you have to go. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. 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 I'm s
My friend Hartman, he talked to you that night on the telephone. Go. No, no. No, please don't send me away. I didn't kill him. They say I killed him, but I didn't, Daddy. I'm afraid of him. He comes to me. He won't let me rest. He won't let me sleep. Why do you come to me? Because I've got to find out who did it. Or I, I'll go crazy. And you think I know? Yes, you know. You were there. And you alone had the right to kill him. Say that you did it. Then I'll know that I didn't kill my friend. You were acquitted. Now go away. But I've got to be sure. Sometimes I see myself pointing the gun at him. Firing it. I want the truth. Tell me the truth. Truth. You shall have it. Confess. Confess to me and save me. Please, I, I won't say a word. I promise. Your... No, never. And why? Because he was trying to destroy me. Us. I didn't want to kill him. It, it happened. It, it just happened. But how can I prove it? Who would believe me? Why didn't you come to me? Why didn't you tell me? I would have lost you, Richard. No. I would have hurt you. I had you back. I was happy. How could I explain that whole meaningless business? Why didn't you have more faith in me, Vera? It's too late now. Your law demands a life for a life. Your life for his miserable one? Sentence me. You are the judge. I'm not your judge, Vera. But I'm guilty. Guilty? The judge of us all shall decide that. Not you, not I. But there will be a trial. You will tell your story. You will tell it bravely and without fear. And the jury will believe you. You will tell it with your head held high and your hand in mine. You will be with me, Richard. Beside me. I am your husband and... I love you. You love me? You forgive me? Knowing? Happy New Year! Happy New Year! The old year is gone. Not good, Richard. Gone and forgotten. 